ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن الأستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة وأهلها في النار أيها المحبة from some of the most important things that we can devote our time to and our studies to is learning the aqida or ittaqad or creed of ahl sunnah wal jamaa because in this day and age we have many people who call to many different beliefs and even under the banner of islam so many people who are muslim uh call to other than the book of allah and the sunnah of the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the path of the salaf al salih and we know this would take place or we knew that this would take place from prophecy because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if tarakat al yahud al ith wa sab'in firqa wa if tarakat al nasara al ith natain wa sab'in firqa wa sataftariku hadhihi umma la thalatha wa sab'in firqa kullaha fi an-nar illa wahida kullu man hiya ya rasulullah ya rasulullah qala man kana ala mithli ma kana alayhi wa ashabi the Prophet said the Jews would break into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, and my ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. That means we need to take our creed, our itaqad, we need to take our manners, our saluk and adab, and we need to take our fiqh, our understanding, our jurisprudence, our minhaj, our methodology on how we understand Islam and how we give da'wah and how we implement Islam, all from uh, the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, and the way of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, because they were the asl of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they were the main Jama'ah. And from the main important things that we should know about is about who Allah is and how to study Him. So issues of Tawheed. And so I chose this and we are going to take a brief study of something which is very important so that, you know, as an introductory book. Uh, and there are so many explanations of this fantastic book or the Kalima, the Shahada, uh, which is... أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. I bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. The shahada is what enters you into Islam. That's why the ulama they say a shahada or some of the salaf used to say is a miftah. It's a it's a key. And the conditions for the shahada are like the um, the teeth of the key, or the tooth, the teeth of the key, because your key, you can you you have a key, and your key will not open any any and every door. It will only open one door. So if you want to open the door to Islam, you need the key to the shahada. That means you need to know. Uh, when a person is entering Islam and the Muslim needs to know this, who's already Muslim, needs to know the meaning of the Shahada because that's what enters you into the Islam. And by not knowing it and not practicing it, not understanding it, can actually make a person not in the fold of Islam. So this is why it's very, very important to understand the Shahada, the Shahadatain. 
And we are going to study basically the first part of the Shahada in this, this treatise. This is called the conditions of La ilaha illallah. Uh, there is no none worthy of worship in truth except Allah. And why it's important for us to understand that, because of course all the Muslims, and even non-Muslims, uh, say and have some understanding of the Shahada, but their understanding might not be the proper understanding. For example, many people, they translate the Shahada, they say, there is no God but Allah. And really, this is a mistake. It is more appropriate, as far as the meaning of La ilaha illallah, to say there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Because the Hindus have gods, even if they're false gods. The Christians and the Jews and everyone else, they have false gods. They worship other than Allah with Allah. Okay? Uh, and especially going back to the Hindus, they worship the elephant. They worship the rat, some of them. Some of them they worship the private parts of Karmakum Allah. Some of them they worship... Uh, all kind of statues and all kind of idols. Likewise, there are many people, uh, the Zoroastrians, as we were talking about the other day, they worship who? They worship the sun. Is it the Zoro Zoroastrians, huh? The ones in Iran. So anyhow, they worship the sun. You actually meet people today who say, who, who come from uh, uh, countries that have uh, have advanced knowledge in sciences and so forth, and you will find people who say we are a sect of people who believe in worshiping the sun. So they might even say la ilaha illallah. They might even say there is no God, but la ilaha illa shams, maybe. Maybe they say there is no God except the sun. That they believe the sun is God. They believe the sun is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But however, Ahl Islam, we have a different etiquette, and that is kufr and shirk al-akbar. Right. The conditions of la ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship and truth except the law. This is a short treatise, which our brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, Abbas Abu Yahya, he's one of our brothers in Jeddah, Talib al-Ilm, long time Talib al-Ilm, who translated this very beneficial um, portion of a book in Aqidah which just deals with the conditions of La ilaha illallah by Hafiz al Hakami, Rahimullah Ta'ala. And it's taken from his book called Al Ma'arij al Qabul. And so we'll just go right into the treaties. The first condition of La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, is al is knowledge. And why is it even relevant that you study La ilaha illallah? That you study the Shahada, because there are conditions that are mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, which show that it's not simply enough to just say the Shahada, that you need to know, have some understanding of the meaning. And that brings up the first condition, which is Al. The first condition of the Shahada is Al. Uh, the meaning of La ilaha illallah and its intent are affirmation and negation. So knowledge negates ignorance. Affirmation means positive, to affirm something, and negative means to negate or uh, to negate something, you know, to like deny something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem, fa'lam anu la ilaha illallah. So know that there is no God worthy of worship except. Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem except those who bear witness to the truth. Letting know that the shahada, that you must bear witness to the truth. Which means that they testify to la ilaha illallah while they know with their hearts and they pronounce its meaning with their tongues. So the people of shahada, the people of iman, they pronounce the shahada on their tongue, which is a part of iman, and they have it in their heart. You have to have knowledge and you have to have the other conditions that we'll mention uh, as far as believing in the Shahada. Because some people, they say the Shahada, but they don't believe. And I'll give you a real example. A very famous director, movie director, if you've heard of him, Spike Lee, he was asked many years because he did a, a, a film in the 90s about Malcolm X, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatullah who was a great Muslim, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
accept him from the shuhada and bless him with jannah to Amin ya Rabbil Alameen and forgive his son sins. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. So, he did a documentary, so he had to go to Mecca to do to shoot some of his documentary, not his documentary, a movie. And he was allowed permission as long as he was a Muslim. And he said he was a Muslim. He took the shahada. But then when he came back from his trip in, in Mecca, he was asked, you know, did you, are you a Muslim? And he said, you know, basically I did that to gain entrance to Mecca, you know, to shoot my film. So, of course, although he said the testimony of faith, what? It's not accepted. It's batil. So he's still on kufr. And so this shows us the importance of the conditions of la ilaha illallah. And as the Sheikh mentioned, he said that it, it uh, la ilaha illallah, that it has nafi wal ithbat. It has negation and affirmation. When you say la ilaha in Arabic, that means there is no God. That's a negation. A nafi. That means there's, there's no God. There's nothing worthy of worship. Because we consider God something or someone that is worshipped. This is a general human definition. Okay? This is what people say. That's why some people, like I said, they worship the rat, they worship the elephant, or they worship the cow. Okay? And because they believe that that is God. Okay? So then they believe it has divinity and they devote their worship to the elephant or the rat or whatever. Or the sun. And so, the first part of the testimony, testimony is negation. La ilaha, if you stop there. But then we have the harf al-istithna, which we studied before, you probably forgot in Arabic. Illa. Harf illa, this means, uh, one of the meanings is that uh, it is the exception. So if we say there is no God, this is a negation. If we say illallah, then this is an affirmation, except Allah. So that means that the testimony of faith, when we say la ilaha illallah, that has both nafi wa ithbat. It has, affirm, it has negation and, aff, and affirmation. La ilaha illallah, it has... Um, a negation of all false gods is what it means incompletely. And it has an affirmation that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. Are you with me? So this is, so you could say it as a positive and a negative. The Shaykh then went on to say, he said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah bears witness that la ilaha illallahua and the angels and those having knowledge uh, maintaining his creation and justice. La ilaha illa huwa. None has the right to be worshipped but he, the Almighty, the All Wise. And this is in Surah Al Ali Imran, verse 18. So Allah bears witness that there is no God worthy of worship except him. He subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this. And the malaika, and the angels, and of course the nabiyin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, say, are those who you know equal to those who do not know? I, I'm sorry. Are those who know equal to those who do not know? It is only men of understanding who will remember. Meaning that those are the ones who take lessons from the things that happen to them. Those are the ones who benefit from the ilm. What did Allah say? Say, are those who know equal to those who don't know? Of course not. The alam is not like the jahil. The knowledgeable person is not like the ignorant person. And the one who's knowledgeable about Islam, practicing Islam, is not like the one who just does worship and they don't know much about Islam. But they do a lot of salat. But their salat has many mistakes because they don't have ilm. We need ilm. And it shows us that we need ilm in all acts of ibadah. And of min bab al or first and foremost, we need knowledge of who Allah is. And we need to have knowledge of what we testify to. To the testimony of faith. That's what the shahada is. It's a testimony. That's why they say the testimony of faith. Because you need to have knowledge in order to testify. If you were go going to court and they wanted you to testify about something, you would need knowledge about what you're testifying. You can't say, yep, yeah, I bear witness 
or I, I, you know, make this claim that so and so did this, and you don't have knowledge at all about what so and so did, that you you testify in court, okay? But rather you testify when you have a certain uh, bit of knowledge that they require from you, that re is required to make a judgment or arbitration or something in a dispute. So this is why we need knowledge of the Shahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves fear Allah. In Surah, uh, in Surah al fatir uh, verse 28. And Allah the Almighty said, and these similitudes we put forward for mankind, but none will understand them except those who have knowledge. Those who have knowledge of what? They have knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have knowledge of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are two types of ayat that we generally mention. Ayat, the signs you could say are uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> there are the ayat koniya wa ayat shar'iya. Ayat koniya, this refers to ayat signs in the creation. Like some people amongst us love grizzly bears and love polar bears and love lions and love tigers and love watching those the, and, and seeing those beautiful parts of the creation. Yes, those are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and the whales and all the other things and the sea lions. Those are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ayat koniya. Those are the things in the creation that we see, the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creation that show us their ayat, their signs of what? Their signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and His magnificence and that He is al-Khalik. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. And the other type of ayat is the ayat shari'ah, like the verses in the Qur'an, like things that have to do with the sharia. Okay? So the people of understanding, they have knowledge of those things. They contemplate. Why? Because they have ilm. You need knowledge in order to contemplate things properly in their proper perspective. And so as we mentioned, the two, uh, two types of signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are ayat. And ayat or signs, they show us something. This is what we say, they show us something. As we said, ayat shari'ah wa ayat koniyah, ayat koniyah, we said, are in the creation. They show us evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And the wonders and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he, he is our razak and he is al-khaliq. He is the creator and he is the sustainer. Rabbil alameen. Okay, those were the ayat in the creation, those signs in the creation show us. But the ayat shari'ah, those are the ayat like the Qur'an and things related to the sharh, which are evidence and are from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his speech, which is the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and these similitudes we put these similitudes we put forward for mankind, but none will understand them except those who have knowledge. Okay, those people who have knowledge, have ilm. And the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most are who? Are ahl ilm. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, as we mentioned in the other ayat. In the Sahih of Imam Muslim, on the authority of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever dies knowing la ilaha illallah enters paradise. So we see from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever dies knowing la ilaha illallah enters paradise. That means you need ilm. So this hadith is evidence, and this is what the Imam uh, uh, put this hadith in this section of his treatise to show that that uh, that ilm is required, that we need ilm uh, of the shahada. The shahada requires knowledge, ilm. The second condition, and we'll just go over two conditions maybe in each uh, lesson. The second condition, so we said the first is al knowledge, that you have to have knowledge of the shahada. The second is al-yaqeen, certainty of your testimony of faith. You need to be certain about what you're testifying so, to. You're testifying that there's no God worthy of worship except the law. So that means you have to have, you have to have yaqeen in your heart that this is true and certainty that you want to practice. The second condition is certainty, which negates doubt. Certainty negates doubt. It's the opposite of doubt. Such that the one who pronounces la ilaha illallah 
does it with certainty of what these words indicate with a decisive certainty. That means you're full yaqeen when you say la ilaha illallah. This is since iman cannot do without certain knowledge, ilm al yaqeen. You need certainty. It's a part of your iman. That real iman you know, Iman, that real belief, if you're mutaraddid, you, you're, you're in between this and this, that's not knowledge. I'm, I'm sorry, that's not yaqeen. That's not certainty. It's the opposite. You have doubt. And doubt is is a, is the bab, the way to kufr. Especially if you doubt about Allah. Imam Fuzan mentioned some very beneficial uh, benefits regarding his treatise about the Nawakid of Islam. And he said, you know, for example, some pers some uh, person who wonders whether there's really a paradise or there's really a hellfire. He said, this is disbelief. These things you must have yaqeen about, okay? Especially as Muslims already in the fold of Islam. The new Muslim, you, you make that clear for them. You bayin, you qim al hujjah, to qim al hujjah that you, you give him the evidence to show that, you know, this is a part of the Islamic belief. This is the aqeed of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. So this iman cannot do without certain knowledge. Ilm al knowledge of with certainty, as opposed to suspicious knowledge. Ilm of dhun. And what would be the case if doubt entered iman? Allah subhanahu wa taala says, only those are the believers who have believed in Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and afterward doubt not, but strive with their wealth in their lives for the cause of Allah. Those, they are the truthful. Surah Al-Hujurat, verse 15. Very important. If we just contemplate that striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Because think about the one, the Mujahid, who goes fi sabilillah, or the Talib al-ilm, who goes fi sabilillah, who goes to seek knowledge strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to seek the praise of the people, not to seek anything else, or the one who spins in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving up the dunya, that, that, that with, with yaqeen, you see the, why their reward is so great. Or the muhajir, the one who makes hijrah, either from their sins, or the one who makes hijrah to uh, leave their land of comfort to the land of Islam where they struggle, maybe. That, is, that requires yaqeen. And that's why the reward is so, so uh, immense for the one who has certainty in their heart and strives in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those, they are truthful. Uh, so certainty was a condition for them having truthfulness in their iman, in Allah and His Messenger, and also that they did not have uncertainty or doubt in la ilaha illallah. As for uncertainty, then that comes from the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. The hypocrites are the ones who are uncertain. They don't know, should I pray or should I not? It depends on, you know, I don't really believe, or I sort of believe, I'll just pray for the people. These are, this is the way of the hypocrites, the munafiqun. Uh, so as for uncertainty, then this comes from the munafiqin, and we seek refuge with Allah from nifaq, wazandaka wa kufr. They were the ones about whom Allah Ta'ala said, it is only those who believe, not in Allah in the last day, and whose hearts are in doubt, that ask your leave to be exempted from jihad. So in their doubts, they waver. And this is Surah Tawbah, verse 45. So it shows that they, they wavered in their hearts. They weren't sure. So they had hypocrisy. In Sahih, in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, from the Hadith of Abi Hurairata, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I testify that none is worthy of worship in truth except Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah. There is no servant of Allah who meets Allah with these two testimonies, not doubting in them, except that he enters paradise. Listen to that hadith of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I want us to understand this. We're almost finished, so be patient with me. Listen to this hadith again, and see how it is evidence for yaqeen, for certainty, because this is the second condition. We said the first condition is ilm. The second condition, you know, is knowledge. And the second is yaqeen, is certainty in your heart. In Sahih of Imam Muslim, from the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, who said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I testify that there is no, none worthy of worship in truth except Allah, and that I am the Messenger of Allah. 
And then the Prophet وسلم, said, There is no servant of Allah who meets Allah with these two testimonies, not doubting in them except that he enters paradise. So that lets us know what? Not doubting in them. Meaning that's the op doubt is the is the opposite of yaqeen. That means uh, al mafhum from this hadith is that you have to have yaqeen with that shahada. So this hadith is an explanation of other ahadith which show that only uh, saying the testimony of faith. Because some of the people they say only say the shahada and that's enough. Okay, without having those other things in their heart. You know, just saying the shahada, khalas, you're a Muslim. This is what, some, of course, that enters a, a person into Islam, but they have to have intention. They have to have uh, some knowledge of what it means. Okay? And that's why you need ilm. And that's why you have to have certainty, yaqeen. Okay? And so that's very important because the Prophet ﷺ made, uh, made bayan or clarified for us that with that uh, testimony of faith, is a shart, is a condition. And that condition is what? Is not doubting in those testimonies of faith. That means you have yaqeen. And yaqeen, the opposite of yaqeen, is shak, is doubt. Okay? Uh, and in another narration, there is no servant of Allah who meets Allah with these two testimonies, not doubting in them, who is prevented from entering paradise. So the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu lets us know, these two hadith let us know that yaqeen is a condition for the shahada. Because uh, the Prophet sallallahu mentioned not doubting in them, meaning having no doubt that your heart is certain that, uh, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. Also in the Sahih of Muslim and the authority of Abu Huraira from the long hadith that the Prophet sent him with his shoes and said, whoever you meet behind this garden that testifies la ilaha illallah with certainty in his heart, then give him the glad tidings of paradise. So that shows us that this is a shart, a condition for la ilaha illallah. So the Messenger وسلم, made the entrance into paradise of the one who says la ilaha illallah conditional upon his having certainty of it in his heart with no doubt in it. So if the condition is removed, then the reward is also then removed. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al nafi rizqin tayyibu amilin muttaqabbilin. Anything I said that was correct from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas wa yaqeen wa al ilm wa al fiqh wa basira wa iman wa al rizq wa khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.